Hi again, everyone, and welcome to the second part of this week's lectures. Um, so in this, <clears throat> in the previous uh, lecture, we looked at what is morphology, what's a morpheme, what's a word. So from now on, we'll be looking at uh, kind of the different types of morphemes and how they behave, and um, maybe a little bit at how different languages will use these different types of morphemes as well. So to start off with, in this one, we'll be looking at um, morphemes that are words versus morphemes that are what's called an affix. So another way that we might put this is a free morpheme versus a bound morpheme. A free morpheme is going to be a morpheme, or again, that uh, smallest bit of a word that has meaning. So a free morpheme is going to be that morpheme that can occur as an independent word. For example, someone's name like Fred, or book, or to, or like, or not, or of, or go, or run, those can all occur as words on their own in English. So those are free morphemes. Bound morphemes are morphemes that have to be attached to another morpheme. They can't just occur on their own. Examples of this would be the un and the able in unbelievable, or the s that we add to the end of plural nouns or to the end of verbs to indicate a certain tense or something like that. So the past tense ed in scared, um, the plural s in houses, the, uh, adjic the adverb ly in badly, or the negative un in unsure, those are all bound morphemes because they need to be attached to another morpheme. They can't just occur on their own. So a free morpheme, as you might guess from the name, can occur on its own, but a bound morpheme has to be attached to something else. So that kind of brings us into roots versus affixes. Now, I've used the term root before, um, but a root is going to be the central part of a word. So if a word has multiple morphemes, a root is the part that all the other morphemes are attaching to. So every word has a root at its core. So in the example from the previous lecture, we had unbelievable. Believe would have been the root. And then un and able are morphemes that were attaching to the root and modifying its meaning. So un and able were affixes. And believe was a root. So there are different types of affixes. Um, so you may have heard the terms like prefix and suffix and things like that before, and that's exactly what we're talking about here. So a prefix is an affix or a bound morpheme that is going to attach to the beginning of a word. So the un in unlike, for example, is a prefix. And other languages have these too, of course, not just English. So here's some examples from a language called Ilocano where we have the word for north, and then we have taga attached to the beginning of that, meaning northerner or someone from the north. We have the word for south, that same taga is attached to it, and we get southerner. We have the word for town, we get taga attached to that, and we get from town. So basically in Ilocano, they attach this um, morpheme taga to the beginning of a word, and it means somebody from that place. There are also suffixes. So suffixes are affixes or bound morphemes that attach to the end of a word. So English has these, of course, so we add the ing to the end of dance to get dancing. But Ilocano and other languages have them too. So we have their word for grind. And then we have this on that is attaching to the end of grind and we get grinder. We have the word for strain, and then we have strainer, and then we have the word for wrap and wrapper. So basically, they have this suffix that is very analogous to the English um, er, or someone who does this action. So grind, and then someone who grinds, or, or something who, that grinds. Um, strain, something that strains. We have weigh, and then something that weighs, or a scale. <laughs> There are also um, infixes. So infixes are when we have an affix or a bound morpheme that's inserted um, into the middle of another morpheme 
rather than on either end of it. So for example, we have the word absolutely or the word fantastic. We can say abso bloody lutely. We can say fan fucking tastic. And those are actually morphemes that are going into the middle of other morphemes and kind of modifying the meaning. In the case of these ones here, it's just kind of intensifying it. So acting kind of like saying very fantastic or very absolutely in a way. Um, so we do have these infixes in English, um, at least in the sense of um, these two examples. Ilocano actually has those two, and so do some other languages. We have the word uh, for ant, so couton, and then we have the word for ant, but with in added in the middle of it. So kinuton rather than couton means ant infested. Um, so we have those infixes that go in the middle. We also have circumfixes that go on either side. So circumfixes are kind of a combination of a prefix and a suffix. So we don't really have circumfixes in English. At least I couldn't come up with an example here. In Ilocano, they do. Um, for example, there's the word for happy, ragsak, and then they add pog and n. So pog to the start and n to the end, and that means makes someone happy. They have the word for sad, and it means make someone sad. They have the word for wait, and it means make someone wait. And then they have the word for go home, and then you can kind of guess what the um, adding pog and n to go home would mean. Um, it would, of course, mean make somebody go home. So it's important to remember when we're talking about these affixes um, that if we have two prefixes that precede a root um, or two suffixes that follow a root, then the one in the middle is not necessarily going to be an infix. So uh, an infix is specifically when we have a uh, morpheme going in the middle of another morpheme. But when we have morphemes attaching to the end, kind of forming a chain, then we don't have an infix. So we have artfulness, where art is the root, and full is a suffix attaching to art, and then ness is a suffix attaching to artful. So we don't actually have full as an infix. It's just a suffix of art. And also, kind of along those lines, if we have a prefix and a suffix surrounding a root, that doesn't make them a circumfix necessarily. So we can have the word put, and then we have the prefix in, and the suffix s, so we get inputs. That doesn't make in and s a circumfix. So the same with unforgettable. If we have forget, and then we add un to the start and able to the end, then that doesn't make it a circumfix of un and able. We just have the prefix un and the suffix able. So here's an example of this kind of from Mohawk, where they have a whole lot of affixes in a row at attaching to a root word. There aren't actually any infixes or circumfixes there. It's just a lot of uh, prefixes and affixes and prefixes and suffixes. So um, it's important when we are discussing these um, affixes to remember that um, circumfixes and infixes are not just combinations of prefixes and suffixes. Uh, they're actually a type of affix on their own. Okay, so um, in the next lecture, we will be looking at compounds, which you can kind of see the start of right here. Um, so if you're having any issues with affixes or wondering what they are, um, go ahead and ask your questions or you know read, you know, read the book if you have it, that kind of thing. Um, and hopefully... Um, you have an understanding of what affixes are. And we will, I guess, yeah, next lecture we'll be looking at uh, kind of compounds and compound words and how multiple words can uh, combine together to form uh, larger words.